Middleton of Rora is an organic dairy farm near Peterhead in Aberdeenshire, run by owners Bruce and Jane Mackey. They run a herd of 250 Holstein Frisian cows through a robotic milking system of four Laley robots and produce their own yoghurt under the Rora Dairy brand. The Mackey's farming motto is farm as if you'll live forever. There's a strong focus on environmental sustainability with the aim of breeding long-life, healthy cows. We're 560 acres here, mostly grass. We also grow some spring barley, some of which is uh, in the whole crop, and the rest of it we combine and feed back to young stock and the cows as part of their organic ration. The cows at the moment are yielding about 30, 31 um, litres. They've come back a bit since we moved it from conventional to organic production, about 10% or, or so. The butter fats are good. At the moment, we are just above uh, 4%, about 4.1. And our proteins would be somewhere around about uh, 3.1, 3.2. We have a liquid contract with uh, Graham's and we also make yoghurt on the farm under the Rora Dairy brand. Genomic testing of heifers plays a key role in breeding the next generation of dairy cows and improving the genetic merit of the herd. Our ideal cow that we're trying to breed is something that lives a long time, that's very healthy and gives a bit of milk. In the thing, and probably in that order, actually. One of the things that we're trying to do is to constantly improve the cows that we have. And you know, we've got a number of cows that in the past have produced 100 tonnes. I think we're at 25, 26 at the moment, and half of those cows would have been in the last six years. But we're striving to, to develop the genetic potential of, that, of the cows um, by looking at genomics and how better to breed them and bring in those, those three traits that we want of longevity, health uh, and milk. So the tools that we've used to improve the, the genetics of the cows probably date back to, to the 1980s when we first became a pedigree herd. Um, and then we've been herd recording with the CIS, so we use that data, uh, which is great, to identify healthy cows which are, and productive cows and that. We have access to the AHDB's her genetic report, which is free to anyone that milk records on the HDB website and has a number of traits, including the, the PLI, the Profitable Life Index. The next step for us was um, when uh, genomic testing became available, and we started that about five years ago and really took it up uh, with a sort of vengeance uh, a couple of years ago to the extent that now every calf um, is tested. Colin Penny is a livestock technical vet for Zoetis, who works with Bruce on the farm's genomic testing of heifers. Part of my job working with Zoetis is providing consultancy for farmers who are using our genomics test, which is Clarify Plus, and that's how I met Bruce a couple of years ago. When we genomically test a heifer calf or a bull calf, what we do is we take a tissue sample and really analyse the DNA in that tissue sample in detail. Now we tend to take small tissue samples that which end up in a wee container like this, a TSU. The tissue sample that's usually taken from an ear punch is then sent off to a genomics lab where they do an analysis of the DNA and what we're really looking for is tiny variations in the, gen the, the inherited genes between animals. And what the geneticists do is convert the, the code that's been extracted from the DNA into uh, PTAs, or predicted transmitting abilities, or the genetic indexes that farmers are used to seeing in proofs. We tend to test everything as very young heifers indeed, between a, a week and a month old in a batch. We find that because they're around the steading at that age, they're easy to get at that point, and we're, we're able to test them without much fuss. Using genomic testing has allowed Bruce to breed using the top animals identified in the herd. So what differences has it made to the business? We breed on the, the top animals that we identify through the genomics. 
and that's around about uh, 90 to 100 animals. We need somewhere about 70 uh, replacements in a year. If we breed about 90, it gives us a bit of choice once, once they come through, so that's an important thing. And the rest of the herd we breed to um, Aberdeen Angus, it's into the beef chain. It's a policy of sex semen and beef. I think the important thing for me is that we're not a slave to it. We have our favourite cows. For me, it's 203. She's been a terrific cow for us. She's produced uh, 106 tonnes of milk, uh, which is a huge amount of milk, over nine lactations now into her 10th lactation. She's calved every year. She's never had a case of mastitis. That is the cow we want to breed from. Her index isn't that high. But hey, let's put up a straw of sex semen in her and, and take another calf. And if that calf you know, stacks up against the rest of them, well, well, you know, we'll welcome her into the herd. You know, we want to keep on breeding the cows we like. The difference between a parent average uh, genetic index, so say a young heifer calf, her production traits will have a reliability of around 20, 30% at best. But if you genomically test that same heifer calf, the genomic results will have a reliability for production traits of between 60 and 75 percent, as high as that. So it really just increases the, the reliability of, of decision making when you're looking at that animal's information. Most of the, the common uh, dairy breeds that are being used in the UK, you can access uh, genomic information and use genomic testing. The problem comes when you start cross-breeding. So you really need an animal that's at least 87.5% purebred to get a genomic evaluation usually. It might come in the future, crossbred uh, evaluations, but at the moment it's really for people that are breeding fairly purebred cows. The challenges of, of genomic testing is you do get a vast amount of information back when you genomically test. And that is presented in, in different ways. You will get lists of individual traits uh, given to you and also it can be combined into indexes like PLI, Profit of Lifetime Index, or in Bruce's case, he's using DWP, Dairy Wellness Profit, as an index. One of the other advantages of genomic testing is uh, parentage correction. So what we find on average when we get a, a large group of heifer samples submitted, we'll find between 10 and 15% parentage errors on a lot of those batches. And correcting, what the genomics does is they, they find the true sire and correct it. So the problem with uh, having animals with parentage errors is a heifer will go through her whole life contributing wrong information into the database if that's not corrected. So I think that's a, a really viable part of genomic testing is any parentage errors are picked up, corrected, and the farmer gets a true evaluation of that heifer. Animals that you really should be focused on, on for genomic testing is, is heifers, young heifers. Ideally you want them tested well before you're going to make breeding decisions. So we would normally recommend that they're tested under 10 months of age, but you can test at any, anything from a day of age and when the calves are born. But the, the key thing is getting the information back in time to make breeding decisions. So it's got to be obviously well in advance of the first mating. This is a, a group of calves that, that we genomically tested and the results have, have just come back. Obviously the, the advantage of genomically testing is that it tells you things that the eye can't see. Um, so in particular I want to highlight this animal here which is uh, 3616. Doesn't look a whole heap different from the, from the other ones. It was quite exciting for Bruce last week when we found out that this heifer has got a, a DWP uh, Dairy Wellness Profit evaluation of 1031 which means that she's actually joint top uh, DWP index heifer in the whole of the UK. So we've tested around about 18,000 animals with that uh, index. So it's yeah, good news for Bruce and hopefully she will go on to perform to her expectations and the fact that she's got such a high DWP index is a combination of she's got excellent uh, milk production, especially solids figures and also very good uh, wellness evaluation, so resistance to disease, good longevity, uh, all the things that hopefully Bruce is looking for in a cow for the future. These are uh, uh, bullying heifers, we take them inside, put the collars on and serve them to a natural heat. And, and the thing that we want to look at here are these two heifers here, which are actually twins, it's 333 
3 and 3334 three, standing next to each other. Twins, obviously not identical. One's red and white, one's black and white. Uh, but, you know, on their parent average, uh, they would have exactly the same figures. Um, but if we look at what the, uh, the genomics tells us about them, is that there's a, a bit of difference uh, between them genomically as well as just their coat color. So in, um, in terms of the uh, DWP index, uh, the black one comes in at um, 544, and the, other, the red and white one comes in at 400. So there's a 100 odd points of difference between them there. If we look at their milk, there's 300 pounds of difference of milk uh, predicted uh, production um, between the, the black and white one being higher than the red and white one. Twins are a really good way of demonstrating the difference between parent average evaluations and genomic evaluations because as Bruce has said earlier on paper these heifers would have an identical parent average evaluation but because we've genomically tested them we've detected the variations that occurred when these two uh, calves were conceived and some, in some of the traits they're markedly different, which you wouldn't know unless you did genomic testing. Genomic testing costs money, so what is the cost benefit of it? The cost of genomic testing uh, at a sort of entry level is about £30. Uh, if you want the All Singing, All Dancing um, Clarified Plus that we're doing with Suotis, it's £38 or so, around about that figure. To me, that's, you know, that's an investment worth making because it's not that dissimilar from the cost of a draw of sex semen at 30 odd pounds. That uh, genetic test lasts the lifetime of the animal. And so it's, you know, it's a cheap investment, uh, particularly if you regard the cost of rearing that heifer and, and such like. So it's a little cost up front. The difference that, that's been calculated between the bottom 25% and the top 25% is around about £1,200 over the lifespan of the, of the cow. So that, that £30 uh, to identify the right animals to breed from and the right animals not to breed from in your herd, to me, is quickly paid back. I think the short-term advantages uh, come with really uh, targeting the use, for example, of sex semen. So if you've got 80 heifers to breed, rather than putting sex semen across 100% of them, with your genomic results, you can really rank them accurately and say, right, we're going to put sex semen in the, the top 80% of these heifers. The ones who are slightly poorer, they'd be better to get beef semen or even sold if you've got excess heifers. It can seem quite expensive per animal, but if, say we say a cost of 25, 35 pounds, as a percentage of the lifetime rearing cost of a heifer to the point of first calving, which is around about 1,800 pounds last time it was surveyed, it's less than 2% of that heifer's uh, rearing cost to a point of first calving. So for the, the same sort of price as a straw of sex semen, you've really got a lifetime of information from that heifer from, from day one. My uh, take home comment would be, the return is obvious and you should do a, a significant number on, of your heifers so that you have choice to make a selection from them. You know, doing four or five is, is pretty meaningless doing a meaningful number of, so that you can pick out the ones you want to breed from, the ones you don't want to. And I think you know, farmers should really go for it and make a point of doing that. It's not rock and science, do it. To find out more about genomic testing, please visit the website.